Hello everybody, welcome back to another pastel painting and we are back with some more flowers and meadows for you. We are going to do another piece on the Counts and May tents. So not the touch, which is the sanded version, but this is the non-sanded version with a beautiful kind of egg crate texture to it. Um, we've done a little colour study. I am using the colour cube from Sarah Renee Clark. Um, so we're going to use a limited colour palette on this. This is the card. So this is number 182, just kind of a Christmassy theme, almost kind of wintry, wintry-ish colours. So we've got some beautiful tones there. Um, I've already created my colour palette, so you can just about see them there. There they are. I don't know how you can see them because they're all sliding down. That's better. There you go. Right, and that's what I use to create this. So what I'm going to do first is... I am going to do a wash. I'm going to use is a propanol, which is my alcohol for this, um, just because I want to maintain some really interesting, beautiful colours. And the first thing we are going to do is lay down our base colours, and then we'll work on top of that. So, starting with the sky, because we always start with the sky. This is a beautiful pinky grey. I know that in the colour card, it's a sage colour, um, but I wanted to. Are you not sticking? Stick. Uh, I wanted to keep it warm with less green tones because I want this to be like kind of almost autumnal. Um, so we want the dark the branches and plants going up that side so that we've got a focus going this way. Got it? That way. So move this down. Putting plenty of pastel on. This paper does not do a lot of layers. So I want to make sure that I get plenty of colour down first. The lighter sections coming in, just kind of going down here. I'll get some of this blue in. I think this will kind of create clouds. I don't want much, just, just a little bit. Add yeah. some interest. Now this is my blue earth, dark blue as you can see I've got not a lot of it left, so uh, be pretty careful with what I use, but this stuff goes really far, as you'll see when I start applying the isopropanol. light which is a beautiful yellow it's kind of like a, a warm warm yellow I just want this everything so usually when I do plants I do bands going that way this time we're not we are doing bands going the other direction so bands going up Loosely follow what I've done here. Now we've got this beautiful kind of rust red colour. Um, I think I put too much on. I really wanted to lighten it on this side, so I need to be really careful about how much I actually put on in this area. I think I put a little too much on earlier for the colour study, so I'll take some of that out. lighter orange which we can put in. A little bit of dark up here actually just to kind of hem this in a wee bit. This is our lighter orange. See, it doesn't know that light but it is. We kind of got it in patches on this side but the lightest colours up on this side. use the isopropanol and I am going to spray this. Some of it may run but that's fine. So then I'm going to use the paintbrush to, to paint this out. So I need to put a fair bit of 
it down, just because the paper is so sick of it, so. You need to make sure if you're using isopropanol, that you're working in a really well ventilated area. As you can hear by the echo, I am absolutely working in a well ventilated area, but at the same time, you can never be too careful and you need to make sure, because this stuff um, is pretty strong being 70 to 90 percent alcohol depending on which type you get and getting it into the air is definitely not good for you so try to make sure that we keep some the orange that's fine because it's going to be there anyway but try not to do that too much now as we go down what i'll do is i'll do the yellow some of this anyway, so I'm not going to make too much of an issue yet. Wait till you see what happens when I put the darks down. Lightly flicking my brush and not, not looking to blend, I'm just looking to, to move the pigment into the paper um, so that I've got some beautiful tone without having to really scrub at the paper. Um, layers are so important when you're using a non sanded paper, you really have to think about what you're doing where um, and the effect you're looking to get because, yeah very very easy to to overwork this paper but if you follow a, a method like this you shouldn't shouldn't have too many issues yeah, it was a bit dry in that corner right look at that so rinse my brush out, clean it up. That is, as you can see, is already drying at the rate of knots. Um, it always will do, just because it is alcohol. Um, it does not take long to dry. When it does dry, it will be a lot, lot lighter. I'm going to move all the way until it's all dried away, because I don't need the spray, I don't need the tape, masking tape, I don't need my paintbrush. But yeah, you can kind of see this line creeping down as it dries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording and I'm going to use my heat gun and just dry this out and then we will pick up um, as soon as it's dry. Right, that's it dry. Um, looking pretty good, kind of looking more like an abstract piece of artwork than a painting at the moment, but, well that is a painting, but you'll know what I mean. So we are going to start working over the top of this, if you see, I run my fingers over it. I'm getting a little bit, but not much. So, first thing I'm going to start with is kind of re-getting in some of this sky. And this time I will use my finger just to kind of blend it in, otherwise I'll get too much of this texture. I love texture, don't get me wrong, but sometimes just a little too much of it. Meld it in, just gentle it out a wee bit. Like that. Well, that's pretty, isn't it? We really like the sky, it's actually coming out really well. So, I'm gonna start to come down to where we want to go and we're kind of bringing the lighter, a lighter section down this way and another one down this way Kind of come all the way down almost. 
can see that it's still I'm still picking up the pastel underneath because where I'm putting this grey down, it's picking up picking up the orange. But that's that's kind of what you want really. Right. That is definitely better. Go for the yellow. Just bring this back in. Now I will probably be using some pastel pencils as well. I just want to add a bit more finer detail for what we're doing. So The underpainting really is what makes this. That's looking now. And we're going to be keeping the darkest colours over here. Okay, paying attention there we go more of a kind of a yellow orange that's fine that's kind of what you want just rolling the end of my pastel up to kind of get some grass like that weird because of course the more you use them um, the more they kind of deform and actually in some respects that's kind of what you want
throw it on the floor so it can break into millions of pieces, which is what I've just done. The problem with being a partially sighted artist is finding all your pieces once you've thrown them on the floor. If you're querying it, there you go. Now in bits. Now, one of the colours we haven't used much of yet is a blue, and also re-establishing some of my darks, but I want to do a lot of the lights first because I want the darks to be limited. I suppose that's the best way of calling it. Um, and there's a number of kind of flower heads and stuff that's going on in this painting that we do want to make good with. Um, so, I want to do the lighter colour first, I think. I've lost too much of it on this side. Now, there are flower heads, but I don't really want to put those in. Do I want to put those in? What do you want to put those in? So, there's kind of like some Queen Anne's lace or uh, cow parsley. Um, I know I've done a lot of that recently because it's quite a, it's a beautiful plant. So. in here and there. There'll be some that I'm doing with the lighter colour like this, but there will be, I've got some uh, seed head ones which I want to put in, just because they make a really dramatic, dramatic sight, so. Now I'm having to really scrub at the paper but that's not really a surprise because we are starting to slowly run out of So they're the top part of um, reeds that we get along marshes, so not the kind of weird reed that looks like a, a hot dog. This is more like a very spiky round cone shaped brush on the end of a stick. Um, and they are great, they really are great. So this is a Rembrandt? Yeah, this is a Rembrandt. So it's quite hard. I mean, if I drop this, I probably wouldn't break it. Um, and because this there's already a lot down on this paper. It's probably going to take a little bit of effort to get this in. But I do want it mixing anyway because I kind of want, want that colour. Um, I also want to make sure I take it up into this area. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix. And they're not here for me, which is a shame. Guys, you don't know what you're missing. But, you know, never mind. I have everything. So they're kind of teardrop shape, these things. Probably gonna darken that later.
So there's some of our teasels. Um, I'm going to put a few that are just, just blue marks here and there. See as we kind of mix them in, we get a better, better shape. So it starts to be a bit more, more real. to make sure that you've got a nice contrasting tone somewhere. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop with that for a minute. Now I'm going to get pastel pencils out. dark brown these are pit pastel pencils so they do make a huge difference this is a really nice neutral brown which will suit what we're doing pencils is that they will move pastel around that's already on the page so it's good for just adding So this is one of 
dog Max. Did you have a really dark brown? I don't really have a dark brown, it's going to suit me, do I? Problem is, is that a brown on this, whilst I mean, when you look at that, you think, wow, that's going to be a really dark brown. And then when you put it down, it's not as dark as you think. Let's try that and see what I get. to see how this is coming together now. Is it going to fade out? I don't want, I don't want these stalks to look like they're a permanent resident. They kind of look like giant blue um, strawberries, but I know what they are. You guys know what they are because I've told you, so I'm less worried about that. Yeah, you can see pencils aren't quite as sharp as I'd like them to be. Um, definitely recommend if you're using or want to use pastel pencils, they are really soft, okay, compared to. Um, like Prismacolors and Carbofello, so you really need to be buying a decent sharpener um, or they will consistently break. I, as you can see, I don't know if you can see actually, let's see if it will actually bring it up closer to you. You gonna focus? No, I won't focus. If I hold it all the way over there you can see it, yeah. You see that it's chiselled? Almost a chiseled look to the tip. That's because I use um, I use a knife to sharpen mine. But for if I'm doing really fine fur work on a pet portrait, then I use my shark pencil sharpener. But yes, really annoying squeaky noise going on here. is a Caran d'Ache pastel pencil. Um, I like them because they are softer, so if you're working on pastel over the top of pastel, um, where you've got heavy layers of pastel like I have here, on a non-sanded paper where you're literally giving yourself a real nightmare from start to finish already, um, this, these are really good for that, really really good. So yeah, definitely definitely recommend that if you're going to uh, be doing something like this with pastel pencils then yeah definitely recommend making sure that you've got something that can really take the grain a little bit more just adding a few little 
accents. bits here and there. Now we do have a hooded one, got these still. see there's a few other things going on. In here. The ones that are the most visible, the, the ones that have got. Nice colour on them, they're in better shape. Right, now, I know that realistically I've got this here, which is dried head of these. Actually more like flattened flattened discs actually. Yeah. Right. Let's now get the black pencil back out. And I've just thrown at least two of the pencils I was using on the floor. And the third one. But I've still got the black one. I'm not I'm just having one of those days. Right. Sure. 
start to see that you've got, got different levels. so much better. Right, I think actually I really like that. So I'm going to leave it there, I don't want to do too much. Black pencil in my cup. Anyone that's wondering, that's what I mean by my cup. And I think we will leave it there. It kind of covers exactly what I was kind of looking to do. So, um, I am going to get this tape off and then I'll take a shot for my cover. Thank you all for watching today. Remember to like and subscribe because every single one of you that subscribes really does help my channel and help it grow and also gets my videos out to more people, which is really important because obviously I'd love to share this with more people and the more that you like, the more that you comment, the more you subscribe. Also, the more time, the um, amount of time you watch it for. Don't skip bits. Go and get a cup of tea and leave it playing. It all helps for the metrics. And I love every single one of you for joining me on this journey. So, any questions, leave them down below. Otherwise, I will see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.